Independence Day is celebrated annually on the 15th of August as a national holiday in India commemorating the nation's independence from the United Kingdom on the 15th of August 1947, the day when the provisions of the 1947 Indian Independence Act, which transferred legislative sovereignty to the Indian Constituent Assembly, came into effect. India attained independence following the independence movement, noted for largely nonviolent resistance and civil disobedience. During the 1929 session of the Indian National Congress, the Purna Swaraj Declaration, or Declaration of the Independence of India, was promulgated, and the 26th of January was declared declared as Independence Day in 1930, Congress called on people to pledge themselves civil disobedience and to carry out the Congress instructions issued from time to time until India attained complete independence. Celebration of such an Independence Day was envisioned to stoke nationalistic fervor among Indian citizens and to force the British government to consider granting independence. Congress observed January 26 as Independence Day between 1930 and 1946. The celebration was marked by meetings where the attendants took the Pledge of Independence. Jawaharlal Nehru described in his autobiography that such meetings were peaceful, solemn and without any speeches or exhortation. Gandhi envisaged that besides the meetings, the day would be spent in doing some constructive work, whether it is spinning or service of untouchables or reunion of Hindus and Masamans or prohibition work or even all these together. Following actual independence in 1947, the constitution of India came into effect on and from the 26th of January 1950. Since then the 26th of January has been celebrated as Republic Day. In 1946, the Labour government in Britain, its exchequer exhausted by the recently concluded World War II, realized that it had neither the mandate at home, the international support nor the reliability of native forces for continuing to maintain control in an increasingly restless India. On the 20th of February 1947, Prime Minister Clement Attlee announced that the British government would grant full self-governance to British India by June 1948 at the latest. The new Viceroy, Lord Mountbatten, advanced the date for the transfer of power, believing the continuous contention between the Congress and the Muslim League might lead to a collapse of the interim government. He chose the second anniversary of Japan's surrender in World War II, the 15th of August, as the date of power transfer. The British government announced on 3 June 1947 that it had accepted the idea of partitioning British India into two states. The successor governments would be given dominion status and would have an implicit right to secede from the British Commonwealth. The Indian Independence Act 1947 of the Parliament of the United Kingdom partitioned British India into the two new independent dominions of India and Pakistan, including what is now Bangladesh, with effect from 15 August 1947, and granted complete legislative authority upon the respective constituent assemblies of the new countries. The Act received royal assent on 18 July 1947. Independence coincided with the partition of India, in which British India was divided along religious lines into the dominions of India and Pakistan. The partition was accompanied by violent riots and mass casualties, and the displacement of nearly 15 million people due to religious violence. On 15 August 1947, the first Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru raised the Indian national flag above the Lahori Gate of the Red Fort in Delhi. On each subsequent Independence Day, the incumbent Prime Minister customarily raises the flag and gives an address to the nation. The entire event is broadcast by Doordarshan, India's national broadcaster, and usually begins with Sanai music. Independence Day is observed throughout India with flag hoisting ceremonies, parades and cultural events. It is a national holiday. Long years ago, we made a tryst with destiny, and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge, not wholly or in full measure, but very substantially. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. A moment comes, which comes but rarely in history, when we step out from the old to the new, when an age ends, and when the soul of a nation, long suppressed, finds utterance. It is fitting that at this solemn moment we take the pledge of dedication to the service of India and her people, and to the still larger cause of humanity. At the dawn of history, India started on her unending quest, and trackless centuries are filled with her striving and the grandeur of her successes and her failures. Through good and ill fortune alike, she has never lost sight of that quest or forgotten the ideals which gave her strength. We end today a period of ill fortune, and India discovers herself again. The achievement we celebrate today is but a step, an opening of opportunity to the greater triumphs and achievements that await us. Are we brave enough 
and wise enough to grasp this opportunity and accept the challenge of the future. Freedom and power bring responsibility. That responsibility rests upon this assembly, a sovereign body representing the sovereign people of India. Before the birth of freedom, we have endured all the pains of labor, and our hearts are heavy with the memory of this sorrow. Some of those pains continue even now. Continue even now. Nevertheless, the past is over, and it is the future that beckons to us now. That future is not one of ease or resting, but of incessant striving, so that we might fulfill the pledges we have so often taken and the one we shall take today. The service of India means the service of the millions who suffer. It means the ending of poverty and ignorance and disease and inequality of opportunity. The ambition of the greatest man of our generation has been to wipe every tear from every eye. That may be beyond us, but so long as there are tears and suffering, so long our work will not be over. And so we have to labor and to work and work hard to give, to give reality to our dreams. Those dreams are for India, but they are also for the world, for all the nations and peoples are too closely knit together today for any one of them to imagine that it can live apart. Peace has been said to be indivisible. So is freedom. So is prosperity now. And so also is disaster in this one world that can no longer be split into isolated fragments. To the people of India, whose representatives we are, we make appeal to join us with faith and confidence in this great adventure. This is no time for pity and destructive criticism, no time for ill will or blaming others. We have to build the noble mansion of free India where all her children may dwell.